what we're going to do is populate this area with some rocks. And we're going to do that by using what's called a shape replicator, which will take a shape and allow us to populate an area with that shape. Again, in the scene tree, we're going to go to library, level, environment, and then we have a bunch of things we can use in here. I just, I'm just going to acquaint you with the shape replicator so that you have an idea of how quickly you can get some things going here. If I double click on shape replicator, it gives me a pop-up box and I'm going to call these rocks one and click create new. So again, that's library, level, and we're going to have to go over to environment, choose shape replicator. And what we've got now is really just this purple circle thing that doesn't really do anything at all, but what it's showing me there is the area in which it's going to be putting the rocks. And I can change that with the shape replicator selected. Um, it's very easy to do. You can see right now I still have the tree selected. So what I need to do is, ch is select the shape replicator. I can do that by going over to the scene and choosing, actually clicking on the shape replicator that will select it. The TS static is the tree. Shape replicator is, is, well, it's a shape replicator. And now with the shape replicator selected in the inspector, I can go through and choose a shape file. So make sure you have the shape replicator. So on the scene tab, which lists everything in the scene, the most recently added to the scene is going to be at the bottom. So the shape replicator was the most recently added. The tree was before that. So I'm choosing the replicator. If I find this media roll out here, I'm going to click on the ellipse next to shape file. And this will allow me to browse to a shape that I want to populate in this area. In this case, we're going to go to, to art, shapes, rocks, so again, with the shape replicator selected, I clicked on the ellipsis next to shape file. And then I went to art, shape, rocks. And let's just go ahead and use rock one. Click open. And it's put some rocks in a rather unimaginative way in this purple area. So let's make that look a little bit better. You can see that, that they're all sitting right on the ground. And they're all squarely within this purple area. So the first thing that I want to do is I, I want I want some more rocks. Uh, so if I scroll around through here, we can see there's a number of different attributes that we can use. Uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of these. Um, there's a few things that you should make sure that you know how to use. And the first one shape count. This is the number of shapes that are going to be in here. I'm going to uh, go ahead and put this up to 100. So that gives us 100 rocks in the area. Now, they're all pretty boring. They're all facing the same way. They're all the same scale. Um, so what we can do with that is if we scroll down a little bit, we can see down here, here's the shape scale minimum and maximum. This is X, Y, Z, and the rotation minimum and maximum, and the offset Z. So the offset Z is how far off the ground it is, because it, it looks to the terrain file, and that's where it places these. So if I set the offset Z to something like 15, they're all going to be floating 15 units above the ground uh, where the terrain is at any point. Uh, it's It's important to note that one unit in torque is roughly one meter so that's that's uh, 45 feet off the ground it's pretty high so let's uh, let's have these rocks sunk in the ground a little bit I'm gonna go with negative one for the offset Z and that still looks pretty ugly um, what I want to do here is randomize the rotation so I'm gonna set zero for the shape rotate minimum for X Y and Z and for the maximum for each of them I'm gonna go 360 space 360 space 360 this will allow these rocks to be rotated in any way, in a, to any degree, on all of their axes, which would give us, as you can see, a much more random placement here as far as their uh, their rotation makes it look a little bit, a little bit more natural. And what I'm going to do for the shape scale, minimum and maximum, I'm going to make the minimum be 0 0.5 space 0 0.5 space 0 0.5, which allows them to be randomized in their size. So now they're randomized in their size and the rotation and they're all sunk into the ground it's starting to look a little bit more natural we can we can obviously do this as well with trees so we can use shape replicator replicator to place anything in here as long as it's something that you're not going to really interact with these just kind of take up space uh, so you can play with these uh, with these settings for the shape replicator it's pretty straightforward um, there's a couple things that might look a little bit odd if I go through and um, I, I set the uh, inner radius and outer radius the outer radius right the inner radius right now is set to zero so they uh, these rocks are everywhere within this purple circle you'll see in a second if I go through and I set the inner radius to 15 and 15 that creates this smaller inner radius in which there will not be any rocks so if I had a statue there or something that'd be a good way to do it the outer radius also I'm gonna set these 
this to 200 along the X, and we'll see that that changes the size of the area in which it places them. What I'm going to do very quickly is I'm going to set these inner radiuses to be pr pretty small. And you'll see we're starting to get some stacking here. And these shapes are floating. And they're floating because they're resting on top of each other. Um, that's, that's a bit of a problem because that looks, well, unless you want to have floating rocks in your world, um, it, it, it can break the suspension of disbelief. So down here under restraints, we have the ability to say, well, do we allow these shapes to sit on top of the terrain? Yes. Do we want them to sit on top of interiors? Yes. Do we want them to sit on top of other static objects? No. So if I click that to turn that off, now they will not be able to sit on top of each other. And we can do some pretty obnoxious things with this. I'll allow them to sit on top of each other and set the inner radius to zero and the outer radius to like 15. And I can have a little pile of rocks. There's, there's a number of different ways that you can really work with this. So.